Um, I was going to do one quick video on, um, actually, I did my LASIK eye surgery one, and um, the only two things, like, medically that I've ever been through was uh, getting my dental implant and uh, having my gallbladder removed, both, both of which were great experiences also. So I was going to do a quick one on that. Uh, I had a tooth. My second to last one on my lower right, which is in the dental community, is tooth number 30. Um, that for some unknown reason, nobody knows why it happens or anything. It's not a decay issue. It's not a periodontal disease issue, anything like that. It's called um, an internal resorption. It's where the pulp, the live part of the tooth on the inside, um, that has the blood supply and the nerve and everything, uh, for some reason just spontaneously decides to grow from the inside out so it like basically like eats its way out of the tooth and um, I didn't have any pain or any symptoms I decided during my normal x-rays at my own office I get my teeth cleaned uh, by one of our hygienists and uh, doing routine x-rays my doctor was like there's definitely something wrong that pulp in the tooth is huge and we tracked it over a few months and it was getting bigger and I knew the, um, it's kind of terminal for the tooth there's no way to really fix it sometimes you could do a root canal and fix it but mine was so aggressive um, that wasn't an option for me unfortunately um, so yeah so I had to go to the oral surgeon here in town and have my tooth pulled um, in October it was the night of the U2 concert in Tampa and I really 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 love you too and uh, it sucked I missed the concert so uh, I just really needed to get it done and um, he did the extraction for free because I work at a um, dental office that we refer to a lot so that saved me a lot of money um, and I just took like a Valium just to kind of like chill me out I didn't really know what was going on so um, and I had local anesthetic of course to numb it so I uh, had the tooth removed and uh, let it heal for a couple months and then um, I was supposed to have the implant actually placed in January but that's when I had to have my gallbladder removed which I didn't plan on um, so I actually had the implant placed I think at like the end of February uh, by the time I healed from all my gallbladder stuff and felt back to normal and um, everything so I went in in February again with a little bit of volume um, numbed me up they put a titanium rod in my bone um, down in my jaw and then they just screw on like a little uh, kind of like a little pothole cover it's called a healing cap and they leave it alone for like six to eight weeks to heal and to completely osteo integrate into your bone um, so then they go back and they check it and they make sure that everything is solid and completely taken into the bone and then um, you go back to your regular dentist which is the doctor that I work for and they take some impressions and um, three weeks later they cement a crown on top of the implant so I'll show you I don't know if this is TMI but it looks looks just like a completely normal tooth in my mouth. It's a little bit lighter because I haven't bleached my teeth lately. I get better about that. Um, but it'll never get decay. It'll never get periodontal disease. The success rate of implants over a 20-year span is 98%. The failure rate is really low. I can't even tell that it's not my own tooth. It feels completely natural. So I never really had any pain or anything. They gave me pen pain medication, but um, I only took like some Tylenol or ibuprofen kind of deal for a couple of days, and it was great. So I highly recommend it if you have to lose a tooth. Um, usually I'm an advocate for saving teeth, but sometimes it's just better. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like. So it looks just like it's mine. Um, and you brush it and floss it just like I said. So that was a great experience. And then I had to have my gallbladder, as I said, removed in January. Um, I didn't have gallstones or like bad stabbing pain like a lot of people have. They say it feels like a heart attack and all that kind of stuff. I just went to the doctor because I was nauseous all the time. And everybody kept saying, you're pregnant, you're pregnant. And I was like, I really don't think so because I was still having my normal cycles and everything. And I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, I don't know. It could be your ovaries. It could be your gallbladder, whatever. Uh, they did some blood work. It was all completely normal. Um, I went and had an ultrasound done. Um, they checked everything, my kidneys, my liver. I do have a second spleen. They call it an accessory spleen. So I guess in case one spleen fails, I have an extra. You know, I'm all about accessories. So uh, accessory spleen, kind of neat. Um, 
It's only, I guess, like a couple centimeters thick, but still kind of interesting. So uh, everything else checked out great. So uh, then I just kind of dealt with it. They gave me anti-nausea medication, Zofran and Phenergan, and I popped those like crazy for about five or six months and just thought that it would go away. Um, but I didn't feel like cooking at night because nothing sounded good. I didn't want to go out. To I was just kind of basically miserable. I just felt like I was going to puke all the time. So I'm sure you guys that have had hard pregnancies know exactly what I'm talking about, but with no reward of a baby at the end. I did tons of pregnancy tests, and I was like, dude, no way. So um, something was wrong. So I finally got really fed up with it um, at the beginning of December, and I went back in, and I'm like, look, I just can't deal with this. Something has got to be wrong. And I think they thought I was crazy, but um, they did a CT scan of my ovaries and my whole abdomen, and everything came out great. So I was happy about that, but I still couldn't get to the root of it. So finally they sent me for this test. Um, it was an ejection fraction test. They put um, nuclear dye, they shoot it in with an IV, and you lay on a table and get scanned for a couple of hours to see how the gallbladder contracts um, with the bile and all to release it into your stomach to digest food and all that kind of stuff. And I think you're supposed to have like 23% or higher, and mine was only functioning at like 4%. So they're like, yeah, you would totally be sick from that. Your gallbladder's basically useless. So um, the only way to fix it was with surgery. So um, I wanted to have it done before the holidays because I have a lot of time off work during the holidays. But um, it didn't work out. The surgeon that I really, really wanted to see that I know uh, was on vacation. So I waited until January 20th. And um, he said, you know, you got to get it out. So I went in. Um, it was just a outpatient deal. I went to the big hospital here in our town and uh, super, super nervous. Um, they took me right in on time. Um, put me to sleep. I uh, have three, one kind of uh, like an inch and a half incision, and then just two small like puncture incisions where they like blow you up with gas laparoscopy to remove it. I guess I don't know if I'm saying that word correctly, but uh, yeah, they went in and they took it out, and he said it was a big nasty gallbladder. So uh, it confirmed, I guess, like what the test said that it wasn't releasing anything. Um, so I went home, they gave me a bunch of pain medication and everything. I was really nauseated afterwards just from the pain medicine. I actually had to have like an anti-nausea suppository at the hospital and they gave me like a little motion sickness patch to help with the nausea and more Finnergan and more Zofran and all through the IV, but I was still really nauseous. I never threw up though. I went home that night and started eating chicken soup. So I went in at like 6.30 in the morning. I came home at 8 o'clock that night. Um, and, uh, all I took was Tylenol for a couple days. I was just really sore. Like I had done a really hard workout. Um, and I was nauseous the first couple days and I was like, oh crap, it didn't work. I'm still nauseous. But let me tell you, I was loving life after that. And that's why I had to join Weight Watchers because all of a sudden I could eat everything. And I'm like, I'm going to be 600 pounds if I keep this up. Cause I was definitely compensating for the best year that I hadn't felt good. So, um, yeah, I joined Weight Watchers as soon as they said all was good and all was healthy and all that. And I saw the x-rays they took during the surgery with the clamps in and everything. And it was very, very cool. Um, and it was just an awesome experience. Um, I did take a week off of work. I had it done on a Wednesday, and I felt good enough by Monday. I was dying to go back to work because I'm like, I'm so bored, <laughs> you know. And um, so, but because of the job that I have at the dental office, patient care all day long, I use my abdominal muscles leaned over people. Um, so my boss was like, no way, stay home, you know, till Thursday. So I went in the next work Thursday and I did work, um, but it's kind of a short day. It's like 8.30 to 3.00 or 3.30, and then I have Fridays off, so then I had, like, another three days to recuperate after that one day, because I was just kind of tired from being up and around, because I've been pretty horizontal. Um, my husband was great. Uh, I had my cycle during the surgery, so when I came home that night, I felt pretty gross, and I had the betadine all over me and all that, the iodine or whatever that they swab you down with, and he was awesome. He, like, stood me up in the shower, and he hooked this, like, hose contraption up that we bathe our dogs with, and he totally, like, scrubbed me down and put fresh PJs, and he was awesome. So he definitely did, like, help me on and off of the commode and, like, into the shower and help me, like, lean over to wash my legs and all for, like, the first week because I was just really sore. I couldn't, like, lift myself off the couch or lift myself out of the bed. But, um, so, yeah, so it's a really great experience, and I feel awesome. It's really, like, a miracle. So, um... Yeah, just be persistent. If you feel like something's not right with your body, you know your body and you're probably not crazy, go to somebody who will listen. And uh, luckily, I had some great doctors that finally got to the root of the problem. So, yeah, that's it. All right, see ya.